Hey guys, Joey here, and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how I approach guitar layering. I have a few specific approaches to writing, tracking, and mixing guitars that make a song sound huge, but also clean. And if you're struggling with guitar layers in your own productions, make sure to watch this till the end. Now, let's get into it. Since a great sound starts at the source, I'm gonna start with how I track the guitars. I like to record a DI and use amp sims to create the tone. This gives me way more options for variation, which I'll cover in a second. And to minimize noise, I'll use tape and foam to cover the strings behind the bridge and nut. This is gonna make sure that I'm only capturing what the guitarist is actually playing and not a bunch of noisy harmonics. Check out this before and after. I usually record the song in small chunks to make sure that I'm getting the best possible performance for each part. This can mean building chords up one note at a time, which is referred to as the Mutt Lang method. After tracking, I'll use a combination of copy, paste, time alignment, and clip stretching to make sure that all of the takes line up. Having complete control over a production has always been my philosophy. The next step is where I do my gating. I don't really like to rely on a noise gate to make those decisions for me, so I always cut my guitar tracks manually by hand during the editing stage. I do a lot of double tracking and my approach depends on the part. Now let's open some examples. In rock or metal, I always double track rhythm guitars. It's pretty much the only way to get a modern sounding guitar recording. I'll hard pan these guitars left and right. I like doing this because there's an automatic variation between performances that add depth to any song. Once I've got a good pair of takes that have already been properly edited, I take it to the next level with tone. Using a slightly different EQ scheme on the amp is a great first step for making two guitars stand out. Just make sure that the difference is subtle enough so that the two tracks still mix well together. Toneforge makes it really easy to do this with the built-in parametric EQ. With this, I can use the exact same tone and emphasize different aspects of it, which creates very variation while still maintaining a tight doubled sound. Different amps, cabs, pickups, and mics can also create unique tones from track to track. I like to switch out one of these elements if I'm layering two of them on top of each other, like when I quad track guitars. This is something that I'm gonna do when I want a part to really feel huge. A great opportunity for this technique is in a song's chorus, which is where I like a song to feel the largest. I almost always introduce some tonal diversity when quad tracking for two reasons. Number one, the frequency spectrum will be more fleshed out by the difference in the two guitar layers, which makes the whole thing feel bigger. And number two, different guitar tones will have less buildup in the same frequency. This makes sure that the guitar tracks don't become too harsh or too muddy. For more information on how I dial in a rhythm tone, make sure to check out the Toneforge Bootcamp. I left a link in the description. Another thing I like to use is special effect rhythm tracks. This could be anything from octaves, glitches, filters, or modulation. I can pretty much get these down to two applications, features and texture. When a part is featured, I'll usually cut the regular rhythm guitars out completely or reduce their volume. The goal is to give a special effect the spotlight to make the transition or idea hit harder. This is especially effective when I use choppy glitches like this. The second way I use these effects guitars is to add texture to the existing rhythm track. I'll show you a few examples.
This is a great way to flesh out a rhythm track and really makes a guitar sound unique. Now let's get into the lead guitars. Just like with the rhythm guitars, I like to double my leads too. Honestly, I just prefer most of my tracks to be in stereo. If the lead is simple enough to be played twice accurately, then I'll just record two tracks. I'll usually use a different amp, mic, or cab combination than the rhythms to give these guitars their own space. And since a lot of my sessions tend to end up with way more than two leads, I'll even differentiate them from each other with different mic positions. For example, this track has four lead guitars going on all at once, so I'll use a different mic on each pair. When the song has a really shreddy solo, it's tough to get a tight enough double tracked performance. And I'm still gonna want that solo to have stereo depth. And I have a few ways to get this effect. First, I can use a stereo cab with different mics. Toneforge makes this super easy to do this. If I don't have this option because I'm just mixing an already printed amp track, then there's still a few ways to get around it. You can duplicate an amp track and offset the takes by a few milliseconds. I find that like 10 to 30 works pretty well. This gives the mono some stereo depth, but won't always work because of the phase when turned into mono. That's why I like using mono compatible wideners. This spreads the frequency spectrum between left and right channels to get one take to sound more full, but doesn't cause any phase issues when collapsed to mono. My approach to cleans is similar to the effects rhythms. If they're not the featured rhythm of the section, I'm using them as a texture blend or a transition effect. The cleans are, you guessed it, doubled and panned. In a metal track, I try to keep the focus on the treble of the clean guitars. There's already enough body in the track like this between drums, bass, and rhythm guitars that there really isn't any need to flesh out the mids. A sparkly clean guitar can sit closer in frequency to the vocals and cymbals to add a unique texture. I'll usually have a lot of compression, delay, and reverb on my cleans. When I'm using a clean guitar as a transition, I'll bring the high pass down to let more of the body through. This puts it more towards the front of the mix so that the listener pays more attention to it. And you know, it's gonna help break up the song so that the listener doesn't get fatigued by the constant noise of a distorted rhythm tone and it's gonna make the next part feel fresh. This is really just an overall view of how I layer my guitar tracks. The one thing I haven't covered is how many layers that I'll use in a track. And this is because it really depends on the goal and vibe of a song. If a song is supposed to have a raw live mood, then you know adding tons of layers in post-production is just gonna disrupt that. On the flip side, a song that calls for an epic wall of sound will suffer from just having two rhythm tracks and a lead. Knowing how many layers a song needs and what they should be is something that you'll really learn just with experience. Try fleshing out your own songs and then muting the extra layers to see what approach you or the artist prefers. And that's it. How many different guitar layers have you made work in your production? What tricks do you use to glue it all together? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check the links in the description below and tap that bell to get notified whenever we upload new videos. Until next time, happy mixing.